This video will be about hyperuricemia. Hyperuricemia is all about uric acid or urate. If we break down the word, it means too much uric acid in the blood. So, what causes too much uric acid in the blood? The answer can be broken down into two categories. Either too much is being added, or not enough is being removed. Overall, the problem is usually that not enough is being removed. We will start with adding too much. It helps to recognize the body as a complicated machine with lots of biochemicals. Part of the machinery includes the cells in the body that are constantly dividing to make new cells. And as time goes on, the older cells die off. And when the cells die off, the body has chemicals to break down those dead cells. One chemical that comes from breaking down dead cells is purine. The body converts purine into another chemical called hyposanthine, and then hyposanthine into xanthine, and finally, maybe you can guess it, into uric acid. If we think about this concept, if there is a situation where many cells start dying, that will result in a lot more purine being released, and in turn, that will result in a lot more uric acid. Diseases that involve this concept are tumor lysis syndrome, and blood-related cancers such as leukemia. The idea is that with cancer, the cells in the body are multiplying uncontrollably. We usually treat cancer by killing the many cancer cells with chemo and radiation. As a result, the body can end up with an overabundance of uric acid. Now, let's take a look at this breakdown. What I have written down is a simplified version. In reality, it is more of a web with many branches containing the different chemicals that can be made from one another. Each process has catalysts or enzymes that can help one chemical turn into the next one. In certain diseases, a catalyst or enzyme may be deficient or non-existent in the body. In this case, without this enzyme, there will be more hyposanthine in the body, which will in turn result in more xanthine being made which will result in more uric acid being made. This specific disease is called Leish-Nihan syndrome. Another disease that has a similar effect is von Gerke disease. Lastly, we could add too much uric acid from the foods that we eat. Two groups of foods that are known to contain an abundance of purines are red meat and seafood. Alrighty, we have covered the ways too much uric acid could be added to the body. Next, we'll cover the different ways that not enough is being removed. Real quick, unfortunately, half the time, there is not a known explanation for why a patient is not removing enough uric acid. And so, donate to your local research center today. Anyway, we know that uric acid is removed from our body by our kidneys. Thus, if someone has kidney disease, their body will have a tougher time removing uric acid. And of course, alcohol has to play some role. Unfortunately, alcohol uses the same channel uric acid uses when being removed from the body by our kidneys. As a side effect, some medications can interfere with excretion of uric acid. The most common medications include the water pills like furosemide and the thiocides. The idea is that the medications allow uric acid to return from the kidney back into the blood. A low dose of aspirin can do this as well. That covers the main reasons a person can have hyperuricemia, either by adding too much or not removing enough. Now you may be thinking, okay, so what's the big whoop with hyperuricemia? Hyperuricemia increases a person's risk of developing gout and kidney stones, two diseases which women who have given birth report are almost as painful as labor. I will be covering the ways hyperuricemia is treated in my next video about gout. As always, thank you for watching. Feel free to comment on any topics you would like me to cover.